show is brought to you by BetterHelp, okay? Look, mental health is important. We need to be having these conversations, and sometimes we are not having them enough, okay? That's why BetterHelp is lit, all right? Look, look, here's the thing. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option, okay? It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Sometimes you just really need someone to talk to, especially in these lonely times we're in, okay? If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. I'm about to dive in. David, so, uh, this is my first time seeing you for the new year. Happy new, new year to you. Happy new year to you. You gotta finish it. Happy new year, dear David. You must say your fucking name. That's the trashiest thing. Wait. Happy new year to you. Okay, wait, now. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. What's up, man? Dude, it's a fucking 2023, dude. It's my fucking 2023. It's good to see you. It feels good. Regardless of how shitty your years might end up, like the new year always feels so hopeful. Why is that, man? I think everybody likes to feel like they can hit a reset button. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm. Like... Even though you could literally get your shit started any day of the year, there's something about that like symbolism of like just the whole new year starting again makes you feel like, yes. This year I'm going to fail my New Year's goals again. <laughs> yeah. This year I'm going <laughs> to fuck up all over again. But at least you're optimistic about it. Yes. Yes, um, very much. I brought you, um, I was going to get Starbucks, but then um, I was driving by Krispy Kreme and they have this glazed coffee. That, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the syrup. I guess the syrup tastes like a glazed donut. The so, fuck out of here. Oh, the fuck out of here. I'm not even kidding around right now. So I feel like, so what I, I rolled through and I was like, can I get one of your glazed lattes but with like no milk? And Because it comes with 2%. And the guy's like, do you want me to just, you want almond milk instead? I was like, no, I'm going to put liquor in it. <laughs> I'm going to put alcohol milk in it. He's like, um, I don't think we have that. I'm like, no, 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 no. My own stash. <laughs> Sir, it's too early in the fucking morning. <laughs> That's so fucking funny you say that because I went to get wine in the morning, okay. right? And I said a joke where the lady was like, she goes, oh, would you like your receipt? I was like, no, it's going to be all gone in an hour. She went, <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me. She goes, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, lady. <laughs> like, I'm an alcoholic. And first of all, why do you open up a wine store at 9 a.m.? It's not my fault. Yeah, stupid lady. Yeah, she, you, She's an enabler. Yeah, you know what? And she's kind of hot, too. I like it. Oh, okay. Well, let me know what wine store that is so I can go <laughs> buy wine. <laughs> wine and more in Pasadena. Please sponsor this podcast. I brought back the almond milk liqueur from Bailey's. Oh, well. Which Nikki Blades did not like. Nikki Blaze didn't like? She didn't like it. Well, that's why nobody likes her, stupid idiot. Wow! Yep, we're replacing her on the No Chaser podcast. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, didn't like it? No, well, then she said she doesn't like almond milk. So I was like, oh. Well, her face is shaped like a fucking almond, all right? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you distribute how much you want here. I'm just kidding, Nikki Blades. I've had many sexual dreams about you. <laughs> oh, speaking of which. In the past. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, in the past. When she was on this Maxim magazine cover years ago, I was like, who is this hot, <laughs> hot girl? And then I met her in person, I was like, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding, Nikki, you're great. All right, well, cheers. Um, let's try this uh, oh. alcohol version of a, of a Krispy Kreme glazed latte. Oh, and they got that good ice. Mm. Oh, this is fantastic. Well, then. This is fantastic. <laughs> wow. Well then, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. wow, wow, wow. And what is what is wow in Korean again? Huh? Omo, om, om, om. <laughs> you know, yeah. o, omo, <laughs> microphone. Oh, Yo, omo. wow, mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow, delicious. Well, my guy, hold on a second. Before you give me your Starbucks breakfast, I have a treat for you. Oh, oh, do you now? I have something better than your stupid Starbucks breakfast. <laughs> That's a little offensive. It's a little early in the morning for that, huh? 
Do you know what? <laughs> do you know what I got you for breakfast? What? Oh, okay, all right, okay. Sick. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> usually, what he says, he brings like good things. It's usually shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, fine, whatever, dude. You got the fancy version of what I got you. Yeah. Oh my god. Hey, so if you guys don't know, Alvin, I believe his last name is Kylon. Alvin. <laughs> yeah. Alvin Kylon <laughs> is known for this restaurant called Egg Slot. <laughs> Uh, he has a few locations now. Started off in a Fourth Street Marketplace. Fourth Street, <laughs> and now he has multiple locations. <laughs> Very delicious. He got really popular off of his a uh, sous vide egg thing, where everybody was posting it. But quintessential. Oh, and he got the sous vide egg thing. The slut. The slut. Amazing, Alvin Kylan. So, it's Amazing. a coddled egg with uh, potatoes and. Uh, Palm puree. Oh, it's delicious. I got mine without cheese, but they did not mark which is which. So we're gonna find out. And I gotta tell you something, man. This guy's starting off this new year fucking banging right now. Oh my guy, look. I even though you know every day that you wake up with the gift of life is an opportunity to start your life anew. Change whatever you had issues with. Where's the uh, organ? <laughs> <laughs> And grab life by the balls, suck the dick of life, get the nut of life in your jowls, and make life brand new. You yes, know what I'm saying? Life is a burning. <laughs> burning like the tree. <laughs> like the STD you got from sucking the dick of life. But it's not permanent like most life struggles. But, but, there is something interesting. This is something that feels good about 2023. Uh, feel about, it, right? about, a, about a new year. So I was like, man, let's get some good shit to start this year off right. I, I really wish I knew which one was the cheese. Because one of the things I was trying Maybe to... Maybe you can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you... Okay, I'm going to tell you my vote for which one potentially has no cheese. And you tell me your vote. Off, off smell. Actually, these smell exactly the same. Wait. Tell me your vote. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. I think this one is cheese. I thought that one had cheese. <laughs> <laughs> God, we, don't know, we don't know shit. Damn it. They couldn't mark it? Well, it doesn't even matter if they marked it now because we mixed here them we up. Well, this is yours. All right, fuck it then, man. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, I'm really like... Since this is a new year, I'm like, let me really actually try and stick to this cheese shit. <laughs> People are so sick and tired of your cheese. <laughs> They're so sick of it. I saw this one comment that, like, Tim, every year you fail on. I was like, first of all, guy, it's a joke, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. You don't gotta you don't gotta motivate Tim to not eat cheese. <laughs> it's a fucking joke. It's not that serious. <laughs> um let's get a let's get a little dip before we get into the conversation, because I don't know about you, dog. I'm hungry. Oh, I am always hungry. I ate so much this holidays. Oh my guy, I also went in very hoard. Oh, oh. But but I was also like, you know what? Who fucking cares, dog? I'm living life, man. Dude, man. You know what? Life is good. Life is beautiful. Even though last year kind of fucked me in the butt. Did it? Yeah, well, you know, the whole the opening the store was a hardcore fight, pain in the ass. Mm. But hey, man, I'm still alive. Mm. 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 I oh. was trying to think. Okay. I thought that like Maybe I had done this before, but then I, I, I remember that it was Sherry Cola that had brought some. So I haven't done this with you, the egg slut. Mm, the female, David, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one with the oh. smaller titties. <laughs> 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 no, you started off this new year with a lot of hate, huh? <laughs> All right, man. I hear you. <laughs> how about you, man? Like, how you, do you, Are you somebody who's like, hey, it's the new year? Um, I'm I'm ready to, you know. It always fucking feels good, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually don't like it when people say, David, you don't have to start. You could start right now. Right. Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I want to do all the toxic shit I've been doing <laughs> for the past year. I want to start it off in January. Hey, man. It makes, it's kind of like this. I, I always have this habit of doing this. Um, It's so silly, but. Have you ever, like, you're going to bed, and you go, I'm going to go to bed at 10 p.m. tonight. Mm -hmm. And then it hits like 10, 10. And you're like, 
I might as well go to bed at 11. Yeah. <laughs> That's my whole life, dude. It's always been like that. Once I fuck up, I'm like, you know what? I'm already here, dude. Yeah, fuck it. I'm already here. I might as well just go all the way and just start over tomorrow. Past the point of no return. That's how I deal with all my weight loss goals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't reach this week's goal. <laughs> my, fuck it. Throw it all out the window. Nicole already broke his cheese thing. I in did. A, in a matter of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally January 3rd. Um, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I, and I and I do really feel like, you know, it's like you can't help but feel a little optimistic. You know what I'm saying? Feel hopeful. Feel like, you know what? Yes. I said I was going to do an album and write a movie last year. <laughs> but this year's Ten different. years later. <laughs> Ten years later. Fast forward. All right, mm. y'all. It's. 2030, <laughs> and I finally wrote something. We're still doing this podcast? Yep. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I uh, I actually, you know, speaking of the uh, of the movie, um, I think I like that I haven't written anything down yet because, oh, this year is going to be a new start for me because, you know, your boy's going to see how he works on a little low dosage of Ritalin, see how that affects my brain at night. So check it out. Check me out. Show 100%, me. A hundred percent. I know I have what you have. Okay. I don't even need to get assessed. Okay. This lady, if I if we have the same doctor, then it'll be like, you know, Tim, because <laughs> I have it for sure. So I want you to get on that shit, mm -hmm. and I want to see how well it does for you, <laughs> and then I'm gonna use you as a guinea pig, and then I'm gonna try it out. Okay. Because she told me she was like, don't take it at like five, because it's gonna be in your system for like, you know, five, four to six hours. Oh shit! It's like that, huh? Yeah. She's like. When you when you know you're gonna, she's like, take it early in the afternoon, so it's kind of out of your system by like five or six, so you can go to sleep, right? And I'm like, well, what if I like writing till like one a.m.? You know what I'm saying? She's like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, okay. Take it at five. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Maybe she's just she's daring. Yeah, go ahead, take it at five, bitch. Yeah, see what happens, motherfucker. Yes. You don't want to listen to me. See, see what, what happens, then, idiot. <laughs> so check it out. This I wanted to talk about this because. We love dream talking. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. I've been having this weird reoccurring dream, and I have no fucking idea why. Oh, yes. But the way that this dream happened the third time, it's so fucking weird. I actually woke up, like, lightweight screaming a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, ah! like, shit like that. Oh, my God. So, I've been having a reoccurring dream mm -hmm. about my very first girlfriend. Mm. And in the weirdest way possible. And it's like in a third person experience, which happens in a lot of my dreams. So you're watching it like it's a movie almost. Yes. And it's me, but it's not me. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. in this third person dream, I am cheating on my wife with my very first girlfriend. So Interesting. reconnected with her after a long time and I'm seeing her again. Right. But it's not me. It's watching myself do this. And as I'm watching myself do this, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But I can't stop myself from having this secret life with this other woman. Right. Okay. And so in the first time I had this dream. Um, like we're reconnecting, we meet up at a coffee shop and things starts to rekindle or whatever, whatnot, mm -hmm. right? And then it always jumps into us living together. Mm. So it goes from us meeting up, saying hi, and then it jumps, the dream jumps into us living together in like a small apartment that's kind of like a college dorm. Mm. And we're like holding each other, mm. you know, we're like kissing. So it's not just fucking, it's like intimate. No, it's intimate, which is the the part that in the dream makes me so fucking uncomfortable watching mm. this shit, right? And I'm almost telling myself, like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Stop this shit. But every time this has happened, right, the first and second time it was the same. It's like this weird college dorm. Like, the, the couches are very colorful for some reason. It's like a red couch, a blue couch, a green nightstand. And but it, what I, what, the reason why I call it a college dorm is because the way it's decorated is very sparse. Okay. Right? It's not very adult-like. Yeah, it's like a, a poster on the wall or something. Exactly. <laughs> And like the, the the way that I'm holding this girl is like, it's not to fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with this person mm -hmm. and watching it is very uncomfortable. So the third dream that I had, it was actually on New Year's, uh, uh, the night before New Year's. And we, me, Bart, uh, Gio, Taika, <coughs> and Mario, we went on a New, a New Year's trip to Utah to Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And we're sleeping in the RV and this dream was very odd. Same shit happened. But this time... Um, Every time I told this girl, I'm watching myself, I'm telling this girl that I love her and that I that I that I care about her, it felt like a lie. Mm. So every time I lied, in this in this dorm room, right, there would be multiple rooms, a light would shut off. Mm. And so I would lie again 
and that, that room that was super bright that had furniture was shut off and you can't see it. It's just all black. Okay. Every time I told this girl I loved her, I cared about her, and I was trying to convince myself that I wasn't doing something wrong, a light was shut off in every room until the last room, which is the room that we're standing in, turned into a cathedral. Okay. It turned into a fucking cathedral, and now I'm not watching myself. I am. You're myself, in it? And I'm looking at her, right? Okay. And then she asked me, do you still love your wife? Mm. And then <clears throat> I told her, no. Mm -hmm. She starts breaking down crying. I start breaking down crying. Mm. And then in the cathedral starts to get dark. Dude, I start floating in the air. <laughs> and I feel my like this burning sensation on my back. Okay. And then wings start popping out. Oh, my God. Like angel wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like a representation that I felt like I was I was Satan. Like I'm like the fallen angel. <laughs> and I keep telling myself, stop lying. Lying is going to kill you. Stop lying. Mm. Stop lying. Stop lying. Mm. But then I started turning into Satan and then I woke up. Interesting. How fucking weird. That shit was tr I woke up like feeling myself. It's weird when you feel, feel yourself going up in the air. Yeah. Like you're going to heaven, but it feels like I'm going to hell. Because every time I lied, there was a consequence for it. Mm. So I... I told this woman that I loved her and I lied about it mm -hmm. and she's bawling. I'm crying and then I start growing like Satan's wings on my back because Satan is actually a fallen angel. He was an angel. Right, right, right. How trippy is that? I'm trying to, you know. I can't analyze that shit. And I'm trying to right now. I'm going back to my like fucking like AP lit, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like honors English, like uh, like English major shit. Um, well, let's see. What, what would you, what do you think? How was your relationship with that with that first girlfriend. Well, here's the thing, right? I don't think about this girl at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? How did it end? Our relationship, oh, fuck, this is hilarious, by the mm -hmm. way. And I've talked about this on the on my podcast, but mm -hmm. who cares, right? But fuck that shit. Yeah, fuck that shit. This is fucking dudes behind the foots. <laughs> so, my relationship with this girl was super, super bad, right? Because unlike you, I wasn't popular in high school. <laughs> all right, I watched that podcast, I was dying last Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I didn't have everybody love me, and everywhere I walked, people didn't throw fucking rose petals. <laughs> All right, hear ye, hear ye. It didn't happen that way, Tim. So I was a loser, and but some things never change, huh? <laughs> All right. All right. This guy's bringing that heat this year. <laughs> That's two insults in the bag, and I'm gonna hold it against you for the rest of this year. Um, yes, I hate you, but we. <laughs> so this girl was one of my biggest life lessons because. During this time that I got with her, right, she was actually one of my closest friends. Okay. And I didn't really appreciate myself. So she was a person that made me feel really good because she liked me, mm. right? So my identity and my my value and worth as a human was based off of what she would say to me. Yeah, so, you're, you're, you're a typical insecure person that's with somebody because they it makes them feel loved. Yeah, you wouldn't know what that feels like. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so when when she left me, I felt that I didn't matter anymore. Okay. So, and you know, by the way, we were best. So it was off and on constantly, right? But with the way that we broke up was I was in college for a year and it was a long distance thing. Mm. And then when we broke up, I, I basically kind of called it off over the phone, but I wanted to take it back. Oh, okay. So we were sitting, we, we were talking to each other when we were fighting and I said, hey, you know what? In all honesty, do you think you and I are even good for each other? Mm. And I don't think... We are. And we were talking to arguing till like 4 a.m. in the morning. Mm. So what I said was honesty, but I didn't want to say it. And I said what I said. And, mm. I, and I think that was the nail in the coffin. And when I woke up, I wanted to take it back. Mm. She didn't call me back for two weeks after that. Okay. And I didn't know what the fuck happened. But then um, Christmas spring break was coming up. And so I went back home to Sacramento. Or it was a Christmas break. I can't remember. I think it was spring break. It went back home to Sacramento. And she finally called me back. She goes, hey, let's meet up. And then she fucking breaks up with me in person after not talking to me for two weeks. Mm. So that, you know, that was a mental thing where I'm like, where the fuck did she go? Is she okay? She's mm -hmm. not talking to me. She broke up with me. And let me tell you, this shit's hella funny. <laughs> she broke up with me and I literally crumbled to the floor like fucking Jenga, <laughs> like, like a stack of Jenga, dude. <laughs> Tim, Tim it was like, oh God! <laughs> Why? Like, and I think I grabbed this bitch's ankles like, please. You're lying! Hey, I'm not even fucking kidding oh you, dude. Oh my God. I was like, please don't. And she's like bawling. I'm like, oh God, I'll be better. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> The biggest loserish thing I've ever done in my life, <laughs> right? Yeah. So check this out. I still didn't learn my life lesson at this point. Mm. It took me about a year of me trying to get back with her, right? And we were still flirtatious, whatever. And she actually ended up having a boyfriend after that too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had this moment where 
I was trying so hard to get her back. One day she looked at me. She said one word that changed my life. This mm. is actually one of the biggest pivotal moments for me as a human being. Mm. She goes, you're annoying. Ooh. And I don't know why, but that shit fucked with me <laughs> so bad. In what way? Like, I just remember she called me annoying and I was like, I'm annoying. You're fucking annoying. What do you mean I'm annoying? Yeah, in my head. Bitch. Like, yeah. what the fuck? And I went home and I was like stewing with that shit. And it wasn't anything that she said particularly. It was just she called me annoying. Mm -hmm. And she's never called me annoying before. And I went back home and I sat down. I was like, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> to yourself? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I was like, holy shit, you're a fucking loser, dude. Oh, because you've been begging for this chick and she's like didn't even respect you. Yeah. And I was like, you're a fucking loser, dude. Mm. What kind of loser shit have you been doing this whole time? You're fawning after this girl who you don't even match up with. Mm. Like, y'all don't fucking match. Mm -hmm. But the, I realized at that point was like, oh, you don't like yourself, bro. Mm. You like her because she gave you value. And even when she doesn't want to be with you, you're still scratching after her. Mm -hmm. After that point, my whole life fucking changed. Mm -hmm. That's when I started doing stand-up comedy hardcore. Right. That's when I started, like, getting into myself a little more. I started dating anything and everything. <laughs> <laughs> anything and everything. Because you were like... Yo, who the fuck cares what these people think? No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't even like a fuck you to her. It was yeah. a fuck you to me. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You, every girl that you talk to, you think that she's supposed to be the love of your life. You mm -hmm. don't even know what you fucking want, bro. Mm -hmm. So I went out there and I dated anything and everything, number one, because I wanted to be a stand-up comic. So mm -hmm. I needed life stories. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I had to get rejected. I had to get dumped. I had to do all this other shit. Yeah. And I started really changing my perspective about who I was and how I should approach women and how I approach things in life. And mm -hmm. it was from that moment where she called me fucking annoying. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize, yo, you are annoying. Mm. You are kind of a fucking loser, dude. Mm. So... And it was such a vindicated, I felt vindicated because I'm like, okay, she was right. Mm -hmm. But I have an ability to change myself and, you know, kind of like tackle life in a different perspective. So that's when I really started becoming a stand-up comic. And I started not giving a fuck about things. So you owe her everything. Okay. <laughs> when you say it like that, I'm back in my room calling myself a loser again. <laughs> well, we're going to try and analyze David's dream right after this break. This show is sponsored by Better Help, my friends. Are you out there? And guess what? Yes, you are, because it's the new year and you need to work on your mental health. I keep talking about working on your mental health because it is super important. Well, guess what? Better Help is here to help with your better health. See what I did there? And I only did that because my mind is right through my Better Help therapist. And let me tell you about the benefits. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Big balls, big pussy energy this year. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you've heard us talk about better help, it's because we really do believe in it. And I still use my better help therapist till this day. Whenever I need him, he's right in my back pocket because guess what? I be going through some shit, man. And guess what? Tim does too. And when Tim is on his better help, he has better health. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash foods. So let me, ask, so maybe, so check this out. Check this out. Is there anything, dude, maybe like, okay, so in that first relationship, right? You were honest with her and it caused the relationship to crumble. You were at a horrible point. Maybe is there something you haven't been honest with now with yourself or with Mariel that's making you demonize yourself inside but you're afraid to be honest because you think it might make whatever's going on crumble like your original relationship mm, did. I don't like this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll t we'll t if that resonates, we'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> Maybe there's something that you oh my, don't want to acknowledge. I'm sweating right now. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Is this <laughs> Maybe there's something that you don't want to be honest with yourself with because <laughs> it could lead 
to something ending. Oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> Mm. Or, <laughs> or maybe, you know, you being honest, yeah, you could look at it like it ended your relationship, but it also started your improvement and you being free, right? So maybe it's something that you need to come clean with yourself with so it can start a new, I don't know. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's interesting, like, my whole life, I hated, you know, the lying thing is the thing that got me the most, right? And I'm trying to figure out, like, what do I lie about? Mm-hmm. And I think the only thing that I was trying to connect with this was that this new year, my, my goal, I was trying to think about being a lot more, um, less David and I'm a little more political. Right. Political in, oh, you mean in the sense of like knowing when to hold your tongue? And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the only thing I could think about was like. Not like speaking on abortion and shit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> abortion is wrong. <laughs> Keep it no matter what. I don't care what you went through. Oh, political David is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. And so what if I like Trump? <laughs> the corona oh my god oh dude let's do a hot take david dude oh no i'm only gonna do hot takes on everything that you guys won't expect <laughs> why do women have rights <laughs> they, they don't even cook in the kitchen anymore <laughs> yeah they're not even earning their rights yeah and i heard they're not even getting pregnant anymore so why the fuck should you vote jeez hot take david <laughs> also what the fuck they forgot the uh, truffle tater tots Oh, son of a bitch. God. And I already nervously ate all this. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're going to be more political this year. Yeah. So I think that idea of me pretending to be something that I'm not, even if it is for my benefit, sometimes eats away at me, right? Mm. And there is a, a, a good benefit of you learning how to hold your tongue at appropriate times, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a skill that I, that I have to learn, mm. right? Because if I want to be in this space for the long run, not everybody's built like me. Mm-hmm. Not, not everybody is my personal inner circle where we could fuck around and joke about anything. Mm-hmm. My friends can check me or whatever. These people aren't my friends. Mm-hmm. So I need to be mindful of their soft ass bitch made feelings. That's what, I t- that's what I try to preach, man. It's like you got to play the game. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, and we've talked about this so many times, right? Um, where... Some people feel like it's fake, right? You might feel like, ah, oh, this is fake to not always speak my truth, right? But I always look at it like this, and I've said this before. Like, everybody at these events, everybody in this business, they're your coworkers. They're not your friends. Yes, yes, So yes. when you go to work at fucking, when I would go to work at California Pizza Kitchen, I wasn't like, like, if my boss was talking to me about some shit I didn't like, I wasn't like, here's what you need to understand, Ken. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Oh, okay. I see what you're cool. saying. That's real good. Everybody yeah. is your coworker. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. know when when to talk your shit and when not to. So Navigate I, your shit. Yeah. I, I look at every, like, I don't care enough about these people to feel like I should waste my time being 100% honest. It's like, for what? You know what I'm saying? It's like, we work together. Like, yeah, we're, we, we might be good coworkers. Like, we might, you know, go to a little company party or whatever, have a couple drinks. But, like, at the end of the day... Everybody I meet at these events, I meet at these fucking galas. It's like, yeah, we're cool, we're great, but we are work associates. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't need to be like, I don't need to tell you my 100% truth. I don't need to fucking tell you how I feel because, um, you know, I'm keeping it professional. Yeah, that's a very, very good take on it, mm-hmm. you know? And I, and I think, like, that's the thing that I probably struggle with the most is that I forget that I am in entertainment, mm-hmm. you know? Because, you know, YouTube for me was just fun. Yeah. And so because it stayed in that fun area mm. and, and we could just fuck with who we want to fuck with, there's no red tape. Right. I forget that when you when you travel outside of it, it's just a different ball game. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their dick out and they're trying to get it sucked somehow. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're not yanking that peen, what the fuck you doing? Know what I mean? But, ooh, but that's the thing. And whether you're yanking peens or flicking beans. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got to be down to be a little obscene, <laughs> and look. And yes, yes, you're 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 jacking dicks off at these events, but also it's because you're gonna get your dick jacked off as well. Mm-mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? You're there to mutually jack each other off. It's a giant circle jerk, and where everybody benefits, and that's that's what you got to remember. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and look, at the end of the day, if I can 
hold my tongue. And that means I'm getting my dick sucked. It's worth it. Mm-hmm. Because the sucking dick outweighs the holding your tongue. Mm-hmm. Put this that one. on my tombstone. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would love that. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's gonna visit your grave all the time just so they can see this shit. No, you know, you know what's going on with Tombstone? Um, thai penises are like Thai chilies. <laughs> my dad, my dad always said. <laughs> People are like, are we, are we, are we, Tim, I think we've heard this before. <laughs> All right. Yo, speaking of my dad, bro, the other day we went to his house for dinner or just a visit. And he's like, so you have uh, an STD? And I was like, what? What? He's like, yeah, you said on your video you have an STD. I'm like, ADHD. (laughs) (laughs) Doc, no fucking way. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that. (laughs) <laughs> He's like, what is that? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, 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 two, no, first of all, completely different things. He only got one of the letters right, which was the D. <laughs> and there's way more letters than the other one. Bro, and then I'm like, and then I'm like explaining to him what it is. Why do you need AIDS to go to school? <laughs> Financial aid. <laughs> Well, and I'm trying to tell him, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, they say, you know, if you have trouble paying attention and have trouble focusing, it's like a, it's like a brain thing, you know? And he's like, I think that's all made up <laughs> in typical Asian dad fashion. Dad, I'm depressed. <laughs> so you're a loser. <laughs> so you wake up every day as a loser. Uh, oh, that's so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture your dad at home going, oh my God, he's been, <laughs> he's been slinging his penis around. How do I bring this up with Tim? Tim, you have STD. <laughs> you know what the funniest part is? What is that? <laughs> Why bring it up if you don't know what it is? He's like, so you, uh, you have some type of letters or something, huh? <laughs> you have your ABCs? Huh? Huh? Oh, bro. Speaking of ABCs. Okay, so you know how we talked about fucking shitty kids' videos and mm-hmm. how they don't rhyme? So I don't know if you're familiar with Blippy. Okay, Mm-mm. Blippy is a guy. Um, I got put on initially because my barber's kid, Vince the barber's kid, was like glued to the screen watching Blippy. This one day, he had to have, like, Vince was cutting, and his his son um, Dante was just in the in the next <laughs> his room. Son Bloppy, <laughs> <laughs> Bloppy, <laughs> Blippy and Blappy. Uh, they, he was just in the room watching TV while Vince cut my hair, and uh, he's watching this guy named Blippy. Blippy, he he wears his orange and blue hat, orange glasses. He goes to different theme parks or like little kids' playhouses, and he's like he's like. Oh, wow. Oh, check this out. Oh, my God. It's made of ice. <laughs> That's cool. Then he does that. Is it an adult? Adult. Okay. And initially, it was just him going around with, like, you know, his homie with a camera following him through these different playhouses because there would literally be parents and little kids in the background. Oh, shit. wait. Is this the guy that goes to, like, the science museum? Yes, yes, he yes, goes, yes, yes. Whoa, look at this, guys. It's water. Yes. Okay. He creeps me out. Yes. Okay. He's a little, he's a little if, if not creepy, annoying. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because um, it's very, like, oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, eggs, right? Yeah, it's all it's all that, and it's it's a little it's a you know it's a lot, right? But I watched different videos as he went from just going with a camera with his homie to being like, oh, they shut down a whole fucking amusement park for him to, to go. Like you can see the el- the ev- ele- ev- evolution, evolution and elevation <laughs> of this shit, where it just he kept you know it was progressing, right? So now it's like everywhere you go, kids sections, Blippy toys, there's Blippy books, there's like Blippy's fucking everywhere, right? He has a whole, it's a Netflix series, Blippy. Um, he has, He's on Netflix Yes, now? he has a Netflix show. He We're has doing kids shit, dude. A different actor playing uh, Blippy. So one day, dog, I fucking Googled because I was sure like he sold it at some point because, you know, now he has a family and shit. Um, I Googled how much was Blippy sold for, okay? And from my understanding of what I read, he was the YouTube channel Blippy. Which got signed to another, probably you could call like an MCN that was signing different kid YouTube channels. And that channel or that company that owned Blippi and also owned Coco Melon sold, bro. Don't tell me this because I'm literally going to off myself. I tell you right now, you are literally going to off yourself. Three billion (laughs) dollars. 
And I have no idea how much the blippy man himself has percentage wise of that. But the fucking company of blippy, Coco Melon, and whatever company owns that shit, sold, acquired three billion dollars. <laughs> Every New Year's goal that I had this year has disappeared. <laughs> I just don't care anymore. <coughs> Tim, welcome to our new kids podcast. <laughs> mm, <coughs> eggs. This is called the slut. Mm. <laughs> Krispy Kreme? Just like how you were born when I creamed your mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you. So conceited of Wild and Out, so irritated at me because literally like over a year ago, we recorded two kids music videos using puppets as an alphabet song and also like a head and shoulders type song right and i had my boy pd flow do all the special effects but while we were doing it pd flow kind of ran some technical difficulties he got busy and then he wanted to redo some shit so we kept kind of uh prolonging the process and conceited would hit me up like every six months yo what are we doing are you dumb we could be dumb rich right now right Fucking sending me all these texts. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm waiting on Peter, waiting on Peter. Ah, okay, I'm about to put it out. And then, um, so now the videos are done. I'm just trying to figure out how to put them out. Maybe I'll put out one on my channel and push to like a new channel. See how they do. But dog, three billion dollars. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, Tim and I are starting a new kids, call, kids show called Ching and Chong. <laughs> and we're just going to talk about Asian empowerment for Ching and Chongy kids. Oh my God. We literally don't even have to rhyme. I know, it's so easy now. Mm -hmm. I love my eyes, they're so big. I love my eyes, they're so cool. <laughs> Literally, bruv. Okay, conceited, I'm sorry, you're done. <laughs> all right, it's gonna be me and Tim called the Ching and Chong Show. And all we're gonna do is talk about Asian empowerment for kids. We're only gonna have dragon puppets. Oh my God. And Ooh, speaking of dragons, I wanna do a skit with you this year because I'm trying to get back on my skit shit. Where you and me are the forgotten Targaryens. <laughs> because, like, who the fuck, where the fuck did they get their dragons from? The Chinese, of course. <laughs> Can I just tell you something right now? Yeah. I was going to save this for the next podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> House of the Dragon Wine. Hey, hey, hey. Well, your grace. I'm, Yo. ready do, I'm ready to do that accent for the whole next episode. Oh, yeah. Your grace will save this for the next <laughs> But yeah, man, I want to do a sketch. I want to rent out. I want to fucking uh, pier space, a little fucking castle looking joint. And then you and me are just blonde wigs, Targaryens. And the whole time we're just pissed that they didn't put us in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it was so funny because I remember years ago, there was a bunch of tweets about like, a bunch of Asian people were mad. They're like, there's no representation in these medieval movies for Asian people. I'm like, you weren't there. <laughs> like, we're, we just... We just weren't there. And they literally just started putting black people in the shit. So like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like, I understand if you're talking about Lord of the Rings or whatever, right. like, cause this is a made up fucking world. Mm. Right. But like, we weren't there. No. <laughs> like, I mean, we, we were there, but we're on another completely yeah, different side of the planet. We're yeah. samurais and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, man. I never watched, uh, what is, is it House of the Dragon? Oh. House of Dragon. House of the Dragon. It's so fucking good, dog. It's like really good. Um, especially, I mean, I know you fuck with Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon is like solid. And even like people saying there was like, there was some comments I read where people like, oh, this is, it's so boring. But I thought it's, it was so fucking just like psychologically intense. Um, I think it's lit. I just, it took me a while to get into, uh, lo uh, Lost. Game of Thrones? Yeah, I'm about to say Lord of the Rings. I fucking love Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, Game of Thrones was hard for me to get into because that first two seasons were a little whack to me. Um, a little slow, a little pre too predictable. So mm. every episode, I was like, I know what's going to happen. What? Even Ned Stark getting... Oh, spoiler alert. Even oh, okay, if you haven't watched it yet, <laughs> please. Even Ned Stark getting killed? Yeah. What? I was like, okay. Okay. Not until the Red Wedding where I was like, oh, this shit crazy. I I'll tell you what. That, that episode blew my penis off. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that episode was fucking next level shit. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> I hear, hear, when people tell me, because I've heard that take from a lot of people that it, it took um, a couple seasons for them to get into it. Because, uh, but, bro, literally from first episode, me and Chia, as soon as, spoiler alert, as soon as Jamie Lannister pushed out Bran from the tower and when he caught them fucking, me and Chia were like, oh, this shit's crazy. That's actually the thing that made me not like the show. Really? Because I knew that was going to happen. I was like, he's going to push him out. <laughs> oh, oh, see, we, we, we weren't. <laughs> oh, see, that's the thing where, and it became very predictable. I was like, oh, this is just about betrayal or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when they really started 
fucking with us on the <laughs> betrayal shit. Yeah. I was like, okay, I don't know where this show's going. Yeah. And they ended it like shit. The audacity. <laughs> and we're going to gripe about Game of Thrones right after this. Or maybe we won't. I watched Game of Thrones when I had the flu because mm. I was I was the only person that hadn't watched it, mm. and then I had the flu and I couldn't go anywhere because I felt like shit. Mm-hmm. And I been binge watched every season until the last season came out. So oh really? Right in time. So by the time I got over the flu, the first episode of the ninth season started. Oh shit! And let me tell you something. I didn't realize how much sex was in this because I was sick and I had boners and I couldn't do anything about it. You can jerk off? No, I had a fever. <laughs> Oh man, I when I get sick, I make sure I jerk off because I feel like with a fever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're a sick freak. I feel dude. like I feel like it takes my mind off how shitty my body feels. Wait, doesn't your head just pound? How do you? Well, I also read that um, <clears throat> jacking off or like uh, that sex in general can help alleviate a headache. You're lying, right? No, now. I read. I swear to God, I read that <laughs> somewhere. Babe. I have, I have a headache. That's Wait. never worked. <laughs> Are but, you fucking kidding me? Take a Tylenol. <laughs> but yeah, I, I read that. Well, also, this this also doesn't work. Oh, babe, you have a throbbing headache? You know what I read. Uh, <laughs> doesn't work. But um, yeah, I read that sex can help with headaches. So like whenever I have a headache or when I'm sick, I fucking try and jerk off. You're f- you, you know what's so funny? I bet you Google stuff just to see, can I jack off when I, <laughs> when I have a headache? And it popped up. Actually, there's a, there's a study that says that if you jack off, you can alleviate your headaches. The Sexaholic Anonymous <laughs> group made this study. Well, here's what's funny, too. <clears throat> One time, I don't know if I told you this before, but I was talking to my boy Pablo, and we were just discussing funny, like, just jack off stories. And... um He's like, yeah, man, a lot of times when I'm sleepy and I'm trying to jack off, like, I'll just, like, give up and go to sleep, you know? And I was like, honestly, man, or, like, when you can't find a good video and then you get sleepy, so you just close the laptop, go to sleep. And I was like, honestly, dog, I'd be so determined. I will not go to sleep until I find a good video and I fucking get my nut off and then I go to sleep. And he's like, damn, maybe that's why you're so successful. (laughs) The dumbest fucking hood motivation. (laughs) What type of shit is that, dude? <laughs> Damn, bro. For like, oh, I see it, fool. Like, it's fucking tired, eh? Determination. Resilience. Where's the weirdest place you ever jacked off? <laughs> I- <laughs> ah, man. <sighs> weirdest place I've ever jacked off. Uh, Instantly. <laughs> now, this is strictly out of boredom. Oh god, oh god, I don't even want to know the answer no, anymore. <laughs> it's not it's not too crazy. It's just funny. Um I for sure have like been on a long flight and just went to the bathroom and just rubbed one out. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You've been in there for quite a while. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm asleep after my nut. <laughs> <laughs> they open the break open the door, your dick's out of your head. <laughs> uh but yeah, just plain bathroom. Let me tell you where I jacked off. Mm. This is the <laughs> You know, you're young and you're horny. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, my parents own a beauty supply store. Mm. And a lot of, albeit, voluptuous, beautiful black women will walk in. Uh-huh. And sometimes, I'm, I'm a young, horny man. Yeah. And they come in. Mm-hmm. I get a look at them. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting a fucking boner. That makes sense, yeah. Because they were so fine. And you know what? Girls are just so conniving. And so they know when <laughs> girls know that they can get something from you, they, they, they just, just, just flirt with you. <laughs> they just, and I know I'm not going to get any. But that flirting would fuck me up, and I'll have this boner, and I have to go to the bathroom. And I would get in trouble because everybody would steal shit. You never know. You might have been able to get a little, like, a hand job off a, of, you know, a free wig or something. <laughs> in front of my mom. <laughs> 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 you never know. They were just, because we put uh, uh, that type of shit, that scenario that I, that I experienced when I was a kid like that, 
in in that movie Gook that I did. Mm. So it's like when I'm flirting with them and I'm giving them free shoes and shit, essentially that was what would happen at the store. Aha. And they would just use my horniness against me and it would work every fucking time because they were so hot. What's the weirdest place you've ever done freaky things? Uh, not, not anything crazy, just in the car. Oh, okay. Which, by the way, when you're a fat person, you're very uncomfortable. I mean, I can see that. Fat and tall, very hard to have sex in a car. I mean, even being a tiny person, it's been uncomfortable for me, yeah. How did you do it? I, when I had, well, I always had SUVs, so I would just lay the back seat down, and then it'd be nice that way. But sometimes it was just so much fucking work. I couldn't get head while I was driving. That shit no? would cause, I'm a terrible driver as it is. Mm. If that's happening, I'm killing both of us. <laughs> I, um, my penis is actually ideal for getting road head. Because I curve to the right. <laughs> this just presents itself. Yeah, so it's like perfectly right into the trot. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> it just angles itself right in there. Um, I would tell you some short boy privilege in terms of like when you ask what positions we would do it in the car. I remember one time, man, this was fucking like college. Um, me and this tiny Filipino girl I used to hook, hook up with, we, we were in the back of the back seat of the car. I'm like, I'm in the back seat like laid out like this. She's on top of me, dog, bouncing. We're in the back seat. She, we're just like fucking like it's a regular ass bed, but she just, because we're both just little. <laughs> when you're fat and tall, nobody's moving. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's moving at all. I tell you, one time I um, I got some fellatio on the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disneyland. In front of the children, too. No, 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 we were in the very back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next is the children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were children next to us, yeah. <laughs> you want to bet there's a fucking video clip of you somewhere. Probably. I mean, and that's not even a shameful video clip either. That's like, people are like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Dude. They're like, are you serious? <laughs> How could he? They take it home and they start fucking making copies of it. I'm sure there's like so much footage of people getting freaky in Disney rides, you know? I don't know how you guys do that shit. I love it. Like the the what do you call the people who like having sex in public? Um, uh, voyeurs, exhibitionists, exhibitionists, voyeurs are the ones that like to watch. <laughs> yeah, you little sick fuck. <laughs> hey, both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like exhibitionists because that shit is scary as fuck, and it causes my boner to go. Meow. Well, here's an interesting tidbit of information. Um, <laughs> people with ADHD. <laughs> when you have a headache, can you fuck outside? <laughs> <laughs> cure, cure your cancer. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, people with ADHD, um, a, a lot of the times, since they have a dopamine deficiency, are more known to be thrill chasers because it boosts their dopamine. So that's why you like jacking off on airplanes. <laughs> that makes a hundred percent sense. Possibly. I once uh, on an on a, on a plane ride to uh, Taiwan, I got food poisoning. Mm. And let me on a, that long ass plane ride, literally on. I, so when I was in Taiwan, no food poisoning whatsoever. Mm. But I got food poisoning from an American airline from American Airlines food. God damn! And I had projectile vomit all over the place. And what? so I was in. Um, I think on this plane ride, did I, did I fly business? No, 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 no. Was I in business? I don't think I was in business this one. But either way, I'm about to fucking yak. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm about to throw up. <laughs> And there's, it's like separated, like business and ours. And then I'm running in. It's like, sir, you can't be here. I'm like, I'm going to throw up. They're like, oh my God. I go in. And so I'm trying to like focus my throw up so it doesn't go everywhere. Yeah. Literally like a cartoon. Projectile what? vomit. Sprayed like I was possessed by a demon. Oh my God. Everywhere. And then I'm trying to clean up everything because I'm so sick with like a little piece of fucking tissue. Oh, like, oh my God. I fucking, I'm so sorry. <laughs> threw up everywhere. I had no idea you could actually projectile vomit. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Just it's coming with such force. Because you know, you see that Family Guy episode mm -hmm. where you hit the Yippacac? Yippacac, yeah. That's exactly how I threw up. Eek. Fucking disgusting, dude. Did it come out your nose? It came out everywhere. It, I was throwing up and I was having diarrhea. Oh. So shit, throw up. Shit. Throw up. Oh. That bathroom smelled insane. <laughs> e, but ha have you had puke go out your nose? Yes. Oh, and it happened then? It happened then. It oh. was literally the worst experience of, of, of my life. That sounds terrible. How many more hours did you have on that flight? I think like four or five more hours. Oh, God. It, it was fucking bad, dude. I'm going to tell you something. Tell me. <laughs> I lost so much weight and I looked so good. You looked great. <laughs> After I came out the bathroom, I came out a bottle. <laughs> That's just, you're feeling yourself. Like, you know, wipe a little puke, but like, all the girls are like on your dick. <laughs> Music starts playing. <laughs> What'd you do? I threw up 
<laughs> projectile vomited <laughs> into beauty. The girls are like, ah, <laughs> I, uh, that's the thing about diarrhea, right? It's like it's two days of like or like a week of like just feeling just, just horrible. But then you look in the mirror, you're like, God damn, I look amazing. Dude, you know how much fucking weight I gained over the holidays? Ten pounds. Really, dude? I gained weight so fucking fast. It's mm. unreal. Like if I'm consistent with my workout, it's it takes time for me to lose weight, right? Mm. This, I mean, ten pounds to lose ten pounds would probably take me about like six months because I go very slow. Damn. To gain it back, two months. That's it, Bruh. When I was wait first before I talk about that, what, what were you what, what were you eating? Uh, during the holidays? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> My mom, when she finds out I li- I'm like in the mood for something, <laughs> she goes in, <laughs> makes it for you every day, every fucking day, dude. Thanksgiving, I ate six Dungeness crabs. Whoa, oh, I'm so jealous, bro. And she does it. She um, poaches it in um, just a shit ton of garlic and onion mm, and just salt. Bomb. You pull it out and yes. then you have like the carapace inside, the, the crab butter. Fuck yeah. You mix that shit with rice. rice. Mm. And then I take some of the meat that when you split it in half and I sprinkle it in there On too. there, yes. Yep. Like your own little bowl. Yup. And you just eat that shit. I eat it with a little kimchi. Ooh. Bro, I had that six times in Thanksgiving. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so that whole break I was there. And then, guess what? December, my mom made Dungeness Crab again. Fuck. Oh. My, my, my parents befriended these neighbors of ours. Uh-huh. And that lady, Korean lady, she can cook hella good too. Mm. So they combined forces for Christmas and we had two fucking ladies that could cook their ass off. Wow. So we had a posan. <laughs> like, ding. <laughs> 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 And she made like this uh, udon salad type of thing with mm. like shrimp and seafood. Then she made um, <laughs> a little bit of boil. <laughs> she did that. She did a Korean. Um, uh, it's called posam. It's the pork belly. Ooh, that's baby. Like, that's like a slow braised and like this soy marinade type of mm. thing. So it's super fucking tender. My mom uh, did a sashimi plate with a yellowtail tuna Man. salmon. I'm about to jerk off under this table. Bro, let me tell you, the spread this Christmas was ridiculous. And then we also had Dungeness Crab on that too. So there was <laughs> so much fucking food. It, it, it was ridiculous. And the thing about my mom is too, like she cooks so much food to the point. Even if I tell her like, listen, I'm going to go see my friends all day today. Yeah, We're going yeah. out to eat. Don't make too much. Yeah. In the morning, a fucking spread. That's what Asian moms do. That's their love language, dude. It truly is because they're not going to speak it. They're not going to vocalize it. Even if like, did your mom ever do this? Because my mom would always do this. If she ever knew she fucked up, did something hurtful, did something mean, never say sorry, but your favorite meal would be cooked mm-hmm. that night. You she would give me a black eye and then I have pancakes in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I would fuck up on person just so I could, just so I could have some good food. <laughs> oh, I really want some puttachige. <laughs> mom, you're fat. Wow. Dog, I've been kind of on a Korean food kick like twice during the holiday break. Um, I ordered from Parks Barbecue in K-Town. Oh, very good. And uh, yeah, Parks is great, but I didn't know that it was postmatable from my spot. And they got this, and I texted you about it, like both times. I was like, bro, shout out to your people, dog, because y'all are doing your thing. It was like a kimchi pork stew. And, oh, man. I tell you, every time I took a sip of this shit, I was like by myself, audibly, out loud, moaning, like, my gooch was getting licked, dog. I was in the kitchen like, mm, oh my, oh my Shut God. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you ain't licking this shit. So let me have my stew, woman. And then your penis comes up and starts <laughs> drinking the soup. <laughs> like a straw. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my headache's gone. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, man, fucking bomb. Um, I, I definitely... um. I ate a lot too, and uh, towards towards the end though, I was trying to chill. Like after kind of going in for a few days, I was like, "All right, let me listen." Cream was salty out. too, so you know you be getting waking up bloated the next day for sure. Yeah, it all goes to my face and my long house. Yeah, you know what? I need to cook you Korean food. My Korean food is not as good as my mom's, mm-hmm. but it's not bad. Pull up, dog. I'll make you a big old booty chige. 
Oh, I love big old booty chicken. Booty though. chicken with the sausages, the spam, the kimchi, mm. the tofu, the ramen bricks inside. Yeah. With the melted cheese on top. The oh crap. No, I don't give God. a fuck what you're done. <laughs> you're going to eat the t- <laughs> It's not like you're ever giving it up anyways, dude. I'm off it, dog. Cut to his vlog. Hey, guys, so you know. <laughs> you know, I don't normally eat cheese, but you know, David came through with the booty chick. I have to eat it with the cheese. We'll see it probably. Yeah. You know how it is. And plus, look, man, she she is so tired right now, so she's always down to not, you know, to have food ready. So pull up whenever it's that. Can she eat a uh, spicy food right now? She good? So she can, um, but it's and and pregnant women can eat spicy food. It's just, I think it's like... The acid reflux gets them, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think it's, it makes like the babies like... <laughs> <laughs> Dance? Kick, yeah, it makes them go, whoa, oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what the fuck, they man? Go, God damn, what's going on out there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Turn into a fucking crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what is that? I need some more of it. Give, give me another hit of that. <laughs> but yeah, so they um usually not too spicy. But um, I'll cook her food again one more time before she gives birth to the parasite. Ah, March... So March 30th around there. Yep. <laughs> She's going to hate it so oh much. Gosh. You're going to give birth to an Aries. Oh, Come on. Little David. So energy. It's yes. going to be crazy. I know mom. You're a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Veda and that baby will start a podcast. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Called Ching and Chong. Oh my God. <laughs> Aluminum boil. Oh, everybody. <laughs> Dude, I was going to tell you this. Um, the other day, because sometimes Veda's getting to that age now where, yes, she's like, she's more aware of what she wants and what she doesn't want. Um, and sometimes she's beginning to get a little picky now with her food, right? Mm, it's at that stage. It's that stage. And I was so proud the other day, dog. I literally, because she wasn't trying to eat like this fucking stew, this oxtail stew recipe that she had tried, which came out really good. But I had made a bunch of white rice to eat with the stew. So we gave her some white rice, put a little bit of soy sauce, and she went in. I was like, my child is so Asian. I was like, I was looking at her like, oh, this was my favorite broke Asian kid meal. It was just rice and soy sauce. That was my shit. Does she like uh, the Korean seaweed? Have you given that to her yet? Um, the Korean seaweed, uh, we, we, she loves the, the seaweed, just like strips of it um, that we get from like Costco. She fucking inhales that shit. Kids love that shit. Even they, for me as a kid, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. And uh, Veda goes in. Um, what's the difference between that and the Korean seaweed? The Korean seaweed is, it's the one that has sesame oil and salt on it. The The regular one before is just straight up dried. With no oh, flavor. yeah, no, well, the Costco one is the same shit. Sesame yeah, that's oil the Korean and a little bit yeah. of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do that, right? You mm-hmm. take rice, butter, mm-hmm. soy sauce, and eggs, mm-hmm. mix that in, wrap it up in a little, with the seaweed. Favorite kid snack of, all, no kid ever denies that shit. Yuck. Okay. <laughs> And I'll tell you this right now. You just shat on my childhood. <laughs> no, that sounds amazing. All right. Um, just eat a bunch of Thai chilies when you were a kid, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I love you. All right. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode <laughs> of Deuce Behind the Foods. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we hope this new year is off to a beautiful start for you. And um, I think that, uh, hey, even if it's the new year or not the new year, um, every day is a new day, you know? Every day that you wake up with breath is an opportunity to start anew and make life great. You suck. You uh, suck, uh, <clears throat> big old dicks. Thanks for watching. Love you, bye. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes.